to be doing our first official part of our review of the 2020 Panoramic by Panoramic RV. And we're going to be covering the driving and riding comfort inside of this rig. So for those of you who may not know, Panoramic RV is out of uh, Mont uh, Montreal. I'm in Monterey. They're out of Montreal, Canada, out of Quebec. And they've been nice enough to lend me this uh, Panoramic for a long-term test. So we've had it for about a month. And I've been using it, using it, using it. I've taken it on long-term trips, short-term trips. I've used it as a daily second car, taking my daughter to the stables. Um, we've used it for transporting a bunch of stuff because June was moving out of his studio in San Francisco. And so uh, we loaded up a bunch of his paintings and things like that into the back. So I've really started using this uh, rig as uh, truly all, all the different use cases that you could use it for. And so I wanted to, I, I think I've got a good enough idea now of how this rig uh, drives and riding comfort to be able to report back to you. So that's what we're gonna cover today. If you have any questions while we're doing these, this review, feel free to ask them. I, I'm just here by myself today, so I'll try to take a look at them when I can see your questions coming up and uh, and answer them, but we'll have a, a, a live question and answer uh, part of the video uh, as a little bit later toward the end. So we're here in beautiful, look at this, we're in beautiful uh, Monterey, California. Let's see if you can see out here. Here, look at that, I've got a great, a choice spot here right on the ocean. And we're here because June is doing a big commission project here in Monterey for two weeks. And so we took the RV down here and had been uh, staying staying in it. And then I'll be heading back during Christmas. All right, well, let's just, let's jump into it. So as a reminder, this RV is built on the 2019 chassis of the Ram Promaster, all right? So the other thing I want everyone to, to know is, as a part of doing this review is that this chassis is not the standard chassis. So if you buy one, if you order one, this is not the standard chassis. There's a couple things that are missing on this chassis that are not on the standard chassis. So a couple things that are missing are this one did not come with cruise control. So actually, I'm going to switch the camera so we can just take a look at the cab. You don't need to take a look at me. You need to take a look at the cab since we're talking about the cab and riding comfort. So here I got the seat switched around. I'm going to turn it so we can see here inside the cab. All right. So here we go. So this is built on the 2019 chassis. This does not have the standard cruise control. So they did an aftermarket for me. You can see it right down here. Okay, are we still live? Let me know. Uh, we have I have five bars here, so I don't know why we have connectivity issues. Um, can someone let me know in chat that we're live? I'm going to continue on. So this is the 2019 chassis of the Ram Promaster. So the Promaster, I'm going to be comparing this to my 2017 uh, Mercedes Sprinter, all right, uh, which I know very well. I've owned both the... Uh, the longer sprinter and then the shorter sprinter. So I've owned the six feet, the six cylinder sprinter um, at 23 feet. And I've owned the, of course, my current one, the 19 inch, 19 and a half inch sprinter, uh, which has a four cylinder engine and a seven speed transmission. So let's review. This is the uh, Pro Ram Promaster. This comes with a 280 horsepower gasoline engine and a 260 uh, pound feet of torque on this. So what, is, what does all that mean? Uh, so when we talk about acceleration on this rig, all right, I'm gonna go over here and sit. Compared, uh, I'm just gonna give it to you straight, okay? Um, I'm not, I'm yet, I'm not yet um, completely sold on the Ram Pro Master compared to the Mercedes. And I'm not sure if that's because I've just spent so much time on my Sprinter that I'm used to it or not. Having said that, I love, from what I've experienced so far, I love the Ram Pro Master. I don't have anything really to fault with it. We're gonna go over a couple little things about it, but uh, when I directly compare it against the Sprinter, there are some things I like about the Ram and there are some things I like about the Sprinter. And I just, I'm gonna be honest with you, I'm gonna share those things with you. So. Uh, 
As far as horsepower, the horsepower on the rim, this thing picks up much faster than the horsepower on the sprinter. So from like a stoplight, I can easily like squeal the wheels on this, on the on the Ram. And I've never been, I would never be able to do that on the on the Mercedes. Part of the reason is because the uh, diesel engine on the sprinter, you know, even though it's a turbo engine, um, it just takes time for it to wind up in order to kind of give you that boost of power. That's not the case on the gas engine. The converse that the flip side of that is, is the torque. I definitely notice when we are going up hills on the ProMaster that it's downshifting a lot. Like uh, it will downshift down to fourth gear. We're, we might be going 60, 65, and it'll downshift to fourth gear, and we're going to be up over 4,000 RPMs. Uh, it'll maintain the speed. It'll get up the hill. I'm never worried about that, but it's a little bit startling. It's a little bit loud as compared to my Sprinter, which just it has no problems kind of going up going up the hills um at all uh so and that's because of the torque the diesels are just a little bit a little bit better there um now one one pro someone's asking does the does the pro master chassis come uh, with blind spot detection so keep in mind the uh traditionally the the pro master has been the least expensive of the chassis the short answer is no not on the 2019 not on this chassis not on the 2019 the 2021 chassis will have, uh, basically it'll have almost everything that Mercedes has. So it'll have blind spot uh, detection, it'll have um, active cruise control, and I believe it'll have active uh, lane keep assist uh, on it. So it'll pretty much have everything that Mercedes has on it in the, in the 2021. So just keep that in mind. But the current uh, 2020, and the 2019s don't have those things. Now, I want to tell you, however, I was I was very concerned about that uh, because I got I've gotten very used to, especially the blind spot detection on the Mercedes. Even though it's a passive system on the Sprinter, passive means that it's not going to actively put you back in the lane. It will beep, you know, and tell you, oh, there's something there. You need to be aware of it. And I don't have that on this, but I haven't missed it. And the reason why I haven't missed it is because of this excellent design. Take a look at this. So I've talked about this in one of my other videos. They properly have put the kitchen on the passenger side. And so look at all the windows I've got here on the passenger side. So I'm sitting in the driver's seat right now. You're basically, your camera view right now is if I look over my shoulder, that's the view that you have on the passenger side. So that's great. I can look over and I can see if there's anything over there. Now, let me turn around this way. This is what's unique. I love about this layout. When I turn over this way, look at this. I've got the lounge window here. So in my Sprinter, there's a wall right here because that's the bathroom. So it's covered completely. I can't see, and I have to rely on blind spot detection because I can't see over here. But here, my best blind spot detection is are my own eyes. So I can look back here and then I can look in the rear view mirror. I can easily see if there's a car over there. So that's a huge plus of this layout uh, is be just having physical line of sight. We're here in Monterey, California. That's where we're at. Um, all right. So let's talk a little bit about mileage because someone asked about mileage. Okay. I'm going to, let me get the keys. I love these live reviews because I can just show it to you straight people so you can see. All right. So I'm going to turn the key. Turn this on. One of the things that I do. Oh, there we go. And we're going to take a look at in real time. This, um, while we're talking about this, uh, so this does have Uconnect. So Uconnect will connect up to your Android and your iPhone. And it's great for things like music. This one does not um, do the Apple Maps and stuff like that. doesn't transfer on here. And we're going to talk about this thing above it here in a second. But I get a trip. We took a trip down from... San Francisco, and you can see here, it was about four hours because we took the coast, and our average was around 15.5 miles per gallon. Actually, it was up a little higher than that. Uh, I got it up to around 17 miles per gallon on the highway. Now, keep in mind uh, that I was babying this thing, all right? I was 
driving 55 miles an hour. I was a feather foot, and I, I was trying to get the best mileage I could out of it, and that's about the best. I got about 17.5, mate, let's round it up, 18 miles per gallon out of this, going 55 on the highway. The overall, let's take a look at this. The overall, this is even before it was dropped off to me. So um, when it came over from New York, you can't really see it here, but see, it's 13.6. So that's about right. That includes city and highway driving. Now, that's not great, folks. I just want to tell you that's going to be a downside of the ProMaster. To give you a comparison, my seven-speed, four-cylinder, seven-speed diesel engine on my current Ascent gets around 25 miles per gallon on the freeway. And combined, I'm getting about 21 miles per gallon. So that's a pretty big difference uh, that you need to be aware of. However, this is gas, which means I just have never had to worry about uh, finding a place to to fill it up. You know, you can fill it up anywhere. Not that it's a huge problem. Uh, if you know you are looking for diesel. But it's just a little bit nicer not having to really ever think about need, where I need to fill it up, and I can just stick you know regular regular into it. All right, let's. I want to show the cab a little bit more. Okay, and then we're going to talk about the. Uh, so it's a basic cab, right? I mean, this is not as luxurious by any means as the Sprinter. Can you guys not hear me at all? I'm on these my Air, AirPods, but maybe I'll just I'll take them out. I'm taking them out. This is hard to reach. All right. Oh, you know what? I'm gonna. There we go. Shut off the car. That way, if it is on Bluetooth, we're gonna shut off. Oh, that's why it's it's on the. Okay, so it's a basic cap, right? I mean, this is not like the like the Sprinter, and just be aware of that. Uh, what I I will tell you that I mean I like the Sprinter, especially the new Sprinter, which has the big touch screen on the front and all that stuff. Um, but you're going to pay a lot more for that. You know, you're going to pay I don't know, twenty thousand dollars for something like that. I. I'll, I'll be honest with you. I don't care about that stuff anymore because what I care about is not so much the cab, which is perfectly fine, but I care about everything behind the cab. See, for me, this is why I would buy a panoramic because this is so functional and so beautiful. And yes, the cab is a little bit basic compared to the Mercedes, but it's, you know, it's perfectly serviceable. And, uh, and I love it, you know, and, and driving, it's very comfortable. So let me talk about driving it. Um, there's a couple things I really like about driving in the ProMaster. So these seats are, compared to the Mercedes here, I really like these seats. Um, I'd say they're, they're more comfortable than the, than the Mercedes, at least the seats that I have. wrapped seats and they've got all the appropriate adjustments that you can do um you know they sit flat so for those of you who have bad backs just look look for this see how these bucket seats are flat they don't tip up like this that's really bad at least for my back right um but these are really flat and they when i when i'm driving in it here's the thing when i sit in it unlike the mercedes okay go in here. There is no tilt wheel on this, okay? There's telescoping. You can pull it down here, and you can telescope the, the, the wheel in and out, but the actual angle of the steering wheel to you is fixed. And so what I feel when I'm driving in this is initially it was a little bit uncomfortable for me because on the Mercedes, I, I felt like I had a little bit more control over my seating position, and I do because of the tilt wheel. And I felt like in the Pro Master, I was kind of forced into one seating position. But that seating position is not, this is just the way all Pro Master. I'm kind of, you, you kind of have to keep your back 
seat back at a certain angle and and all of that because the steering wheels kind of kind of fix and of course your pedals are fixed so that's going to dictate really what you can do with your seat and having said all of that it's perfectly comfortable and i've gone on really long trips now in it through curvy mountain roads and, and everything like that and i haven't had any problems with it now if you're taller i'm, I'm 510 so if you're taller you may you need to check it out you may have a little bit of an issue because you may feel the, the you're a little bit tight in the cab now one thing i like is behind me okay there's no wall behind me like in my sprinter and so i can move the chair you know, all the way, I'm, I'm all the way back now, okay? So I'm all the way back, and you can see, let's take a look at my legs here. There you can see. So I can't fully outstretch my legs here. All right, you see? This is the dead pedal here. This is about the furthest back that I can push this seat. But at least I can push it back all the way back because there's nothing behind me. Yes, these seats do swivel as well. I'll show you that a little bit later. So these seats do swivel. Being a front wheel drive, this thing turns on a dime. I love how this thing turns. And it helps me out quite a bit, uh, especially like in the city here where I'm at. I was just dropping June off at a commercial construction site because he's doing a, a big mural there. And uh, there was a, a couple trucks in there and there was a... a a cement truck in there and I just I turned this thing right around inside of all of that stuff and got it right back out again that's thanks to front wheel drive now this chassis is uh 21 feet so it's about a foot and a half longer just it's just shy of 21 feet so it's just uh, a little bit longer than the sprinter but it's noticeable and I want you guys to be aware of that so I I notice it now I'm used to my sprinter at 19 feet six inches but um I still notice on this, the extra foot and a half. It's not to say that I can't park in a normal parking space. I'm parked in a normal parking space now on a busy road. I'm parked in a normal space, so it's fine. It's just like when I go into like a grocery store parking lot, then it sticks out a little bit. It sticks out a foot and a half more. And so it's just that extra little bit. Would I trade this back down for a 19 foot six inch chassis? I don't think so. Because the ProMaster chassis is three inches wider and it's a foot and a half longer than my Sprinter. And that allows you to have the extra permanent bed in the back, back there, and then the front lounge. Okay, let's talk about the seats. Someone was asking about the seats. So, yeah, these are super simple. Let's take a look. I'm, I'm sitting in it right now. So what you do is right here on the corners, see this? You just lift it and then you turn the seat. It's really simple, okay? So I'm lifting, I lift mine and then I just turn the seat. And this is one of the things I love. Here we are. And now I'm facing backwards here into the lounge. I use that all the time. I use that feature all the time on this ProMaster. It's not unique to the ProMaster, it's not necessarily unique to this layout, but uh, I, I love this and it and it's what makes this front lounge work. Okay, someone asked about the TV. I know this is not about riding comfort, but we'll talk about it. It is a little bit about comfort in the sense that I always ask you guys to look for trip hazards and things that you can run into. And what I like that they've done is on the panoramic, this TV, see on some units, see what you do is you pull this and it releases it, it's positive locking, and it releases the TV, and you can pull the TV out, right? And then you can flip it around and whatever you wanna do with it, okay? Now some, I've been in some rigs where the TV is sticking out like that much. See that? See from here, the wall? It's sticking out, and so what happens is, of course, when you walk by as you're going by, inevitably see look how close that is to my head right and you hit it but what panoramic's done is they've made it so that you can just push it in and get it out of the way and, it, and it's positive locking so but i do want to talk about something else that's um and it's pretty clear here from the floor talking about comfort and the ceiling back here it's pretty clear when you walk back 
Okay, you're not, not, it's beautiful actually. You can get all the way back to the bedroom. But all pro mass, this is not unique to panoramic. But see the step up here? Got to be aware of that because uh, it's not uncommon until you get used to it. When you come out of the cab, you forget about that and you trip up a little bit when you come out. But the bigger problem I have is, and again, this is most pro masters, this thing right here, this. See the cab overhang? I usually do not like any type of cab overhangs because look at it. This is about a foot. It's taken about a foot of depth off the ceiling. But when you combine that with about over six inches here, that's over a foot and a half of suddenly less headroom space that you have. So what June and I constantly do is we come in here, we remember that this is here and we duck, but we forget that we're stepping up because of the step below us. And oh my gosh, we have hit our heads on this so many times. So my suggestion to Panoramic is, I know this can't really be taken out because it's part of the ProMaster design because the roof goes up there, but at least, see this is very sharp here. This is bull nosed, all right? So if you get up here, sitting at this seat, you get up. This isn't going to hurt you so much. This is very sharp. And both June and I have actually bled our heads when we've hit this. And so I would highly recommend this either is bullnosed or better yet, I recommend that they just put padding. See how this is padded back here? Some type of padding here, like a material. It doesn't need to be wood, just padded. And that would help a lot because you are going to hit your head on that. There's no doubt you're going to hit your head on that. Okay. Uh, kind of related, we're talking about not just driving comfort, but overall comfort in, in, inside riding comfort and things like that. Um, another suggestion for panoramic is this plastic here, which is around the window inserts. Um, it works nice, but it's very sharp underneath here. It's very sharp. Now, it doesn't matter so much here in the lounge, but let me tell you where it does matter. When you go to bed at night, you have the beds laid out laterally and see how you have this plastic here. I don't know about all you, but when I go to bed at night, I stick my hands under my pillow when I'm sleeping. And then there's this right here and it's very sharp and it actually, you can hear it. It actually grafts against it and, and it's just, it would be nicer if that were suede. Let's just put it that way. I think they ought to just make that suede. All right, small things. But I'm just giving it to you straight, things that I've run into on this rig. Every rig can always be improved. All right. Um, let's see. I want to talk about, uh, I talked about the gas mileage on it. Uh, it's a little bit, it was a little bit of a shocker. Yeah, that's plastic. This is plastic. Yeah, this black is plastic. You know, it looks nice. It looks very nice. It blends into the window really well. But I just think it's... It's a little bit sharp, and they, they could they could do something with that, just make it a little bit better. Okay. I do, however, like this shelf, believe it or not, here above. Now, this is non-standard, I believe. This is non-standard, uh, but I like it. You can see we just stuff it full of just little things. I get keys and wallets and sunglass case and just... All type, you know, all that little stuff that you have when you're on the road, you can stick it up in there, and you don't really... This is not in danger of hitting your head because it's forward of where your seat is when you turn the seat around. So you're never going to really hit your head there. Okay. So I like that little shelf there. Uh, let me talk about one thing someone else brought up to me. Oh, integrated seat belts on the seats. See how these are integrated? Normally, the seat belts are here on the aid pillar. But they upgraded the seats and they put the seat belts here in the seats. And it's so much nicer in terms of comfort. And that seat belt, especially if you're shorter, that seat belt's not cutting into your neck. Um, something of which, <laughs> take a look here. We bought these. Um, I don't, sorry about that. We have five bars. Think about the... Right here. So the nice thing about these lounge seats are uh, we felt we've had two men sit in there before. It's a little bit tight. Uh, obviously, uh, if you're a little bit smaller in stature, it's easier. But 
it's like the back seat of a car because look at the where it is in relation to the front seats here, right? It's basically like the back seat of a car. So these passengers get the benefit of all the air conditioning in the cab, the heat in the cab, and then conversation is a lot easier when passengers are sitting here uh, compared to my ascent, which is they would be sitting way back here and not having any of those benefits. But there are a couple little challenges. These um, seat belts here, they need to be covered, uh, I think, with something like that so they don't cut into you. The other problem is when a passenger sitting here at this end, at the, at the closest to the aisle here, there's nothing. Think about it. There is nothing. If you sit here, that prevents you, even with your seatbelt on, if I put seatbelt on this way, right? If I take a corner, I can fall right out. There's nothing to prevent you from, from just tumbling right out of the seat. So just keep that in mind. For that. Her seatbelt holds her in. And if we go the other way, then her seatbelt that then the, the, the wall here holds her in. So I don't know if the idea maybe is to move the seatbelt over here so that, you know, it holds me in if we take a turn, but just something to be aware of. Okay. Uh, the couple more things I want to talk about on the, uh, on the driving experience of this rig. Things are, uh, the, I didn't think of actually, um, and, and I don't know why I would have, but the ProMaster does something a little bit odd when you're you're not even on cruise control, but you are going downhill. What the ProMaster does is it downshifts automatically. So to try to maintain your speed. So let's say you're going 65 and you're going down a downhill. Um, oftentimes, I like to just let it coast and pick up speed, but it's almost impossible to do on the ProMaster. Uh, because it'll constantly downshift to try to keep you and uh, in whatever speed you were going. Only if you push on the accelerator will it then shift back up again and, and you'll start picking up speed again. So that's a little bit of an odd behavior. My Mercedes doesn't do that. And I don't I don't know why the I don't know why the ProMaster does. Uh, let's take a look here. I need my seat around. The speaking of the so the gear shift, you do have the, um, here, you have, you can shift it this way and you can do upshifting and downshifting uh, automatically by just moving the gear shift up and down. So if you want to downshift, you just push it to the left and then push it up and you go down the gear, go down the gear, down the gear, and then you can go up a gear, up, up a gear. And I use that a lot uh, if we're going downhill or if we're on curvy roads and stuff like that. So I don't have to use the brakes so much. Okay. Um, as you can see here, it's just really basic inside of here. I don't mind it so much, but it is, it's super basic, but the driving comfort is awesome in here and it's really quiet. And I, this thing here, I want to talk about, this is not standard. We're testing this out for fill. And what this is, is normally you can push this down like this. Okay. It's like that, but you can lift it up, open this up, and then you just stick you can stick up an iPad in here, like this way, or your iPhone in here. And we use this all the time because this does not have built-in GPS. But honestly, folks, I, I mean, I know the new UConnects and Apple Play, uh, CarPlay and stuff like that, uh, you know, transfer stuff onto the uh, navigation system, which is great. But for me, I do all of my navigation on my iPhone anyways, just because I'm using Yelp and I'm whatever trying to find out about the restaurant of the place I'm going to. And so it's just easier to just hit directions and then just stick the phone up in here and give me, you know, directions on my own phone. So I like this quite a bit. The other thing is um, I have kind of two screens because I can have the GPS going here and then through Uconnect, I can have my music and stuff from Spotify playing down here. So um, I kind of get, I can have dual functionality here. Now, speaking about Uconnect, this is kind of at least the one on this head unit here, this doesn't have all the fancy Uconnect features. Like I tried to like get the app on my phone so that I could like control some of the, on the newer cars have the, the Uconnect where you can on your phone start the engine and all that. This doesn't do that. So it doesn't have that. It's just a basic Bluetooth Uconnect where 
your music and stuff like that will come up here and you can control it. But that that's good enough and that's fine for me. Okay. Um, I have not figured out these controls and I don't know if they're standard. I was reading in French that these are for controlling the um, temperature and fan for the back cab, it, for behind the cab basically. So like when this is a cargo van, it's everything back here, but I'm pretty sure that that stuff's not connected because it has its own heating and cooling system back there that's not connected up to the chassis. So I'm not quite sure what those things do. Something I wanted to pull up, pull, uh, out, point out here. <clears throat> I don't want to get hit by a car. So this is the driver seating position here. And someone, another viewer pointed out, this is your emergency brake. So when it's up like that, see, it's fine. My Mine on my sprinter is on the other side it's on the inside aisle over here this particular viewer i haven't had this problem but i actually tried to make it happen is if you're wearing baggy pants and you get out of here your baggy pants can get caught on this uh, emergency brake thing and then you can be kind of left dangling because you're hold on, hardly, i'm right in the middle of the roadway because look how high this is you're a good three feet above the ground you do one step up two step ups and it's still about another foot above that so it's about three feet up so you this person was left dangling so i don't know try it out yourself make sure that you feel safe we've got some nice usb ports there's here one usb port here and there's one usb port down here however what i end up using a lot in this is if you look behind my shoulder back here There is an AC outlet. See where my plug is for my iPhone there? There's an AC outlet. And so I can literally just take my cord and plug my phone in and then I just leave it. I leave my phone sitting right here in my door. <laughs> and so I can get, I can have it uh, plugged in. The other thing is there is an induction charger. That's an induction charger right there, that round thing. And so as long as your battery is on, you can also have another phone if it's so equipped, uh, charging on the induction charger. So little things like this matter. Okay. All right. Someone's asking about the cargo uh, and care, uh, payload capacity. It's uh, this particular rig. Let's take a look here. You can see it is payload 1,370. Pretty good. 1,307 pounds. This is a pretty heavy rig as it is. And uh, so to have 1,370 pounds that you can put all of your stuff in your garage, as well as your passengers and water and all that's really good. You know, this is your garage down here. We've got the garage packed up with, there's a big Christmas gift from, from my daughter, with just all of our suitcases. And we've got back in the back, we've got like chairs and a table and the leveling blocks and uh, an outside heater and just all types of stuff are under there. So you got pretty good cargo carrying capacity on this rig. Um, this rig is very quiet to, to drive in. I would venture to say it's it maybe more quiet. It's definitely as quiet, but I would venture to say it might be more quiet than my pleasure way. It's just, um, it, you can tell it's very well insulated and it's very well built and there's hardly any uh, squeaks at all in this uh, as you go down the road so um so uh, no complaints there and then riding in the cab itself here i actually prefer the seated position okay it feels a little bit lower because i actually think you are seated a little bit lower than the sprinter and you're a little bit a squatter, you're a little bit wider as well. And then you're pushed really forward. If you look here, you don't really see the nose of the ProMaster at all. So I, I like this kind of driving position when I'm driving, it feels a little bit more automobile-like to me. Speaking of being lower and squatter, the ProMaster just wobbles a lot less when you're going down the road. So it's I'm not sure if Panoramic upgraded the tension on this, but uh, when you go up and over, like inside here, 
uh, driveways and things like that, there's just a lot less swaying like this that you get, at least inside my ascent, which would tend to, to sway quite a bit. It feels a lot more firm and, and hugging the road. So, all right. I'd like to answer your questions now, if you've got them. Let me, let me go back and see, do we have, uh, how was energy consumption during boondocking? Are you using a Wi-Fi ranger in the van? Okay, let's talk about those things. All right, let's talk about in energy consumption. Um, so you definitely notice the compressor refrigerator here. This is the brand new compressor refrigerator. Okay which we, we love. Uh, I mean, take a look at this thing. It's like, it's so big. No matter what we do, we just cannot fill this thing up. And it's got a proper freezer in it where you can keep ice cream and stuff like that. So the refrigerator is worth it, but it is a power hog, okay? And you can see right now, we're at 100% battery capacity. And it is drawing in right now. Take a look here, it's drawing in 8.1 amps. So quite a few, quite a few amps are coming in here. Uh, you can multiply, it's over, I don't know how much, how many watts, just multiply the volts times the amps and you get what, 98, 92, 92 watts coming in of power. This has 365 watts of solar power, so we can bring a lot more in. Uh, but bottom line is, unless you're in a sunny area, uh, that refrigerator is going to draw down the 200 amp hours of lithium batteries that you have on board this thing. So if you have a lot of sun like we have right now, you're fine. But that refrigerator, you know, any compressor refrigerator sucks down, you know, it takes a lot of juice. I think I measured overnight, it took around 12% of the battery. If I was at 100%, then by the time in the morning, uh, we were down to, you know, 88%. So you can kind of do the calculations of, of how much energy that's using, how long you'll last. Having said that, it pretty quickly, you start the engine, you drive somewhere, and, and that number will go back up to 100 pretty quickly. So I have not had a lot of problems with uh, being terribly concerned about the energy. Having said that, the propane refrigerator on my ascent, I just never think about it, ever think about the energy usage because there's hardly, without a compressor refrigerator, there's hardly any uh, draw off the lithium batteries. Um, all right. What was the other question that we had? Uh, all right. Are the, is the glass bulletproof? No, this glass is not bulletproof. Um, this is single pane glass, although I'll tell you, it's gotten down to, for here in California, it got down to 28 degrees last, last night. And we hardly had the heater on at all inside this rig. It's just so well insulated. And you pull down, when you pull down these blinds here, they do, they help quite a bit with insulation. And then honestly, the biggest draw that you're gonna have for cooling off the van is the front cab. And they have a, couple different solutions for that. They have this, which is the, our preferred here. This is just a curtain with Velcro here. And what happens is you just take this piece of fabric and you, just, you use the uh, blinds here and you, there's, and you put it around the blinds and then there's Velcro around here. See above the door, the white. And then Velcro across the top here and then along the other side. See there's Velcro. And you Velcro that in, and it does a marvelous job of uh, keeping the windows, keeping light from escaping and light from coming in, but also uh, heat going out. Okay. The other thing that they have here, and I'm reviewing this for, uh, let me get these big bulky shades out. I'm gonna, this is the big bulky shades that they're trying out. These are from the same company that do the screens here. And these things do a much better job of insulating, but they're really bulky. And so I just haven't had the heart to actually <laughs> put them in the windows because it's late at night and I just get tired and I don't wanna have to deal with this big bulky thing here that I gotta take out and wrestle with and put in the windows. So the cloth is just much easier to deal with. Okay. 
trying to bring up the chat and I can't. Yeah, we talked about the gas mileage. Uh, check in the beginning of the post. It's getting about 15 miles per gallon. I can, if I baby it, I can get up to maybe 12, uh, uh, 17, 18 miles per gallon. But that's really babying it and going 55 miles per hour on it. Um, it is sluggish going up hills. That's just the nature of uh, the Pro Master. That's nothing to do with panoramic. It's a little sluggish. It does get up the hills but it downshifts quite a bit. It, depending on the grade of the hill, it'll downshift quite a bit to, to get enough power to get up there. The retractable step. Um, we're talking about this here. So you can push this button here. And when you do, then see, that's a retractable step. I mean, here's the thing I like about the retractable step. See, when I put it back in, all right, take a look. It's very clean along the side of the van. I don't like in my ascent, I have the, the built-in plastic, you know, step, which is just built in, but it comes out, you know, four or five inches. And it's all banged up and scratched up and everything because, you know, it's at the curb level and, uh, and it just starts looking really ugly. So you don't get that with this. You have really clean lines. You can get very close to the curb which is nice. I, I, it's useful. I, you know, these are wide. And so the closer you can get to the curb, the better. This is quiet. I like this Thule step. I had another, not a Thule, not as high quality uh, retracting step on my road trek. And what happens sometimes you got to be aware of this is the water went, uh, and gets up in there and it can short out the, uh, the electronics on the step, which is what happened to me on uh no, it happened to my dad on his class A. It didn't happen to me on my road trek. But I, I don't know. This is Thule. It's a very high-end component. But uh, I, I mean, I like it so far. I like the fact that you can retract it. Okay. Let's take a, just a look around here. Yeah, I don't know about off. Not standard. I think they just put it on because I'm driving get around and it gives them good publicity. But the bike rack there, that's Thule as well. I haven't had a chance to use the bike rack there. Um, here's a thing. This doesn't really fall under riding comfort, but this is where they've decided to put the sewer hose. But uh, it's in such a poor placement because notice the back of the, uh, of the rig, okay? It's already pretty low. And with that, they've lowered it another six inches. So what that means is that th I actually don't have the sewer hose in there right now because we crashed into things so often backing up that it, that thing is completely smashed up. Look at it. It's just, you can't get the hose in there anymore. So it's a poor placement. They need to move it. Uh, I would move it somewhere, not on the back. I don't know if they need to move it here, back here where the sewer is and put it this way, lengthwise in or something. But uh, putting it back here, not a good idea. Because you you just it's already low. And if you go into a slight incline on a driveway or something, that's just plastic. And it's just going to crush that. And it did. It just crushed it. So now, unfortunately, you know, we have this sewer hose just laying in here. Don't worry. It's all cleaned out. So you don't have to worry about it. Someone's asking about the dump station. Dump station's just fine. It's gravity dump. Here's the dump station on the outside. It's just gravity dump. You hook it up there. Okay. I like the tank sizes on this quite a bit. The tank sizes are meaningfully larger, at least than on my ascent. The holding tanks are a lot larger as well. So the, the tanks are, are good. The holding tanks are a lot larger, and they're meaningfully larger on this rig. Black, gray, fresh water. The only thing I have a, a gripe about is the propane. Um, it, it's a little bit small and we go through a lot of propane. Okay. I'll be doing the full review. I'm gonna do a little, a little different. Uh, so I'm reviewing each part uh, in depth like this, which is ride comfort, driving comfort. And then I'll do um, living in it lounge. And then I'll do galley cooking in it. Then I'll do the bathroom. And then I'll do sleeping in it in the back. And then, um, so each one will be its own review, its own section, a lot more in depth and answering your questions, and then maybe I'll string it all together as well, okay? All right.
Other questions? I can't bring up for some reason. How wide is the dinette seat? I don't have a measurement tape with me, but um, I mean, two, two adults. I mean, we had two men in here, but you know, it was a little bit tight. Ideally, smaller people or an adult and a child, but um, you know, it, you can get you can get two people in there. Not a, not a problem. Uh, so so yes. Yeah, so this table that you see here, see this table. It can come out. See the leg here? Um, it comes off. Actually, the bottom part here comes off. But you can detach the table. Uh, just You just lift it. Let me see if I can show you just really fast. There's a little red thing there. And you just, I'm just lifting the tabletop up. And then there's these two black things that are in a, a railing. And then you can just pull it out of there. And then you can attach this table. I haven't done it yet. You can attach it here on the outside. And we've got two, we haven't done it, but you've got two little outside um, chairs. Then you can sit out here and have a table outside. But the table, this dinette also converts into a bed. So see how this leg here, you can twist off this bottom part. See the railing down below there? You can move the table top to those railings so it's flat. And when I talk about the lounge, I'll do this. And then you can just move the cushions and then you can have a bed for a, uh, a child or maybe someone who's a little bit shorter or doesn't mind curling up. You can have another bed here so you could get three people sleeping in here. Right. Yes, this is the one with the brand new compressor refrigerator. This does not have the three-way refrigerator in it. This is the new Norcold. And I like this feature on it. I didn't think I would. Uh, the night mode. It actually quiets it down quite a bit when you add the compressor on board. So it's already pretty quiet. I mean, you're not going to notice it when really when it's running at night. At, at first, I reported that it bothered me, but I'm used to it now. But certainly on night mode, it becomes really quiet. Yes, all of my recommendations are absolutely being reported to Phil on how they can make an already great product better. So uh, but this is, I mean, I, I love this rig so much. And if I continue to love it, I'm going to have to figure out a way I can, I can get me one. I can buy, <laughs> buy one because it's so much more, I love my Ascent, but it's just so much more livable than my Ascent. That, June and I both agree with that. It, this is so much easier to live in than the Ascent. Uh, it's just the layout and all the little conveniences that they've done. The bed is so comfortable. Um, I actually, I slept in it the other day, even though I had this parked in front of my house, I just decided to come sleep in it <laughs> that night. <clears throat> uh, and the, you know, the bed is, is just very comfortable. Um, I'll be honest with you about the shower. I have not yet taken a shower in it. Um, and I will take a shower in it before I do the bathroom review. June has washed his hair a lot in here, but I, uh, we have neither one of us to take in a shower like we have in the ascent. So I'll report on that once we look at this window though. Isn't that awesome in the bathroom? Look at that view. Can I just tell you guys why having something like this is, is so practical? Um, so I was thinking, like, wouldn't it be cool? I thought, oh, you know, it'd be cool to buy some oceanfront property, right? And, um, and ha you know, build a house or something in some remote part of California. And then I thought, you know what? I don't need to spend all that money buying an oceanfront property when I've got the panoramic because we literally just pull this thing in places like this or even more remote than this. And it is a tiny little house, you know, and you wake up in the morning and you've got this view from your bedroom or you've got a view out your dining room, you know, of the ocean or you swing open the sliding door and, you know, let the sounds of nature. And so um, it's really uh, awesome to have, uh, you know, to have a class B like this that, you, that really is a tiny home on wheels and you can take it anywhere and and use it like a tiny home. Yeah, so. All right, other questions. I am in 
Monterey, California. This is the view from, look at this, this is the view from the bedroom. How do you like to wake up to that? Last night, we had a little bit of a problem for all of you interested in boondocking. We were parked actually in a very secluded <laughs> Starbucks parking lot in Pacific Grove. And uh, we're all nestled up and in bed. And then about midnight, someone came tapping on the window with private security and they told us that we had to move. So <laughs> we moved and we found another kind of a private secluded parking lot. <laughs> in uh, Pacific Grove. And then there were some trucks coming in and out of there. And so we had to move. <laughs> and so we did. And finally found a, a spot in Monterey where other campers were parked. And clearly it was a known area where you could kind of boondock for the night. Not as lovely, but those are the some of the things that happen when you boondock is you have to, you have to know your area and you have to plan out accordingly. We're, we know Northern California much better than we do know um, this part of this part of Highway 1, this part of California. But we'll get to know it. How wide is it? Well, I'll, I don't know what the standard measurement is. This is the, the door fully open. Let's take a look at it from the outside so you can see. So you can set the door fully open, but you got the kitchen there. I was thinking of some of your space, but I'd say this almost looks like a little bit less than three feet. It's not three feet, maybe 30 inches. I have to measure it when I get home. That's probably 30. And the full openings, maybe six feet. I'm not quite sure. Maybe a little bit under six feet. This is the panoramic RV. They're just starting to sell here in America. Uh, and, uh, the wait list is probably two years out at this point, but, um, hopefully they'll get their, they'll get it ramped up to get many, but you can start to get it here in the United. This is one of the first ones here that they've made on the U S chassis and brought here. Yes. Have I had many people? I've had a lot of people, especially when it's parked in front of my home. I've had a lot of people stop by and be very interested in it and, and talk to me about it. Um, you know, it's a, it's a nice looking, it's a nice looking class D, you know, it's especially when they see inside, like when we're parked here and we have the doors open, we always get people that come by and, and ask us, Oh, what is it? I've never heard of it. And it looks so nice inside. And can we poke our head in and stuff like that? So Look at the windows, so you can see the ocean out through the windows. That's why they call it panoramic. Okay, other questions? I got people honking at me now. <laughs> yeah, I will bring a measurement tape. Uh, I just didn't think about it this time. I did bring the stabilizer though, so you guys won't get all sick. See, look at the nice, these are the C.R. Lawrence windows on the side. This gives it a very automotive look. Black, glossy black, all down the side. These two open on the back. That's the other thing. This has really nice open ventilation here. And these two open here on this side. And of course your skylight opens. We, wonderful ventilation on this. And then you have one opening window here on the back, it's this one because they don't want the sliding door accidentally, you know, hitting it. So it's, it's this one over here that opens. Okay. The uh, Wi-Fi, the booster. Uh, June is a fan of it. He claims that when it's on, he can get 5G. I'm still, uh, I, I don't know about the, so this comes with the King Wi-Fi booster, it's right here. Not Wi-Fi, this is a cell booster. And uh, when you turn it on, it's supposed to just whatever signals are around for a cell phone, it boosts it. And then the second antenna is located back here. So there's one on the roof of the RV and then the second one's located back there. See it? That's the one for inside the cab. And uh, June claims that it works for him for 5G. I've taken this to my daughter's stables 
and where there I have notoriously awful T-Mobile coverage. And I have turned on the Wi-Fi booster. And um, it seemed to have helped a little bit there. But, you know, anything that you have to really question, is it really helping? I'm not sure if it's worth <laughs> the money or not. Um, we do use the Wi-Fi booster, not the cell booster. We do use the Wi-Fi booster quite a bit. And the, those are antennas are also on the roof here. They're, that's the white ones that came to, where the Wi-Fi ones. Are they up here? Well, that's the solar panels. There you can see. Um, anyway, that helps quite a bit. What you do is you, you put it in, turn it on, and then you find the, it's pretty good at, at finding Wi-Fi signals that are far away. And then it broadcasts them throughout the coach. So then you can just connect to it uh, and all, all your devices and your TV and stuff like that can connect to it. And it's boosting like a Wi-Fi signal from a Starbucks or something that might be a little ways away. Um, and, and normally your phone wouldn't even see the signal, but uh, because this is mounted on the roof and it's a little bit stronger, then it can um, address in future TV, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi. Yeah, I'll talk about all that stuff. I'm talking about really ride comfort and stuff today. Comfort inside the riding drivability of it. I'm happy to answer your questions about that stuff, but I'm not doing the full um, review right now of that stuff. I'll cover that when we talk about lounge and, and livability and stuff like that. Okay. This is 150,000 US dollars as configured. Okay, so this particularly has every possible option that you can get on it and a few things that they're testing out on it. So this has got the Wi-Fi booster and it's got the step and it's got the Thule bike rack on the back and the upgraded lithium batteries on it and the upgraded refrigerator and um, all that stuff. So this is this has got uh, pretty much every option on it, but it's missing a few things too. It's a, it, this is not available for resale because it, it's the cab, the chassis is missing cruise control and uh, GPS and the auto automatic mirrors and stuff like that. No, this is not suitable for off-road driving. This is not four-wheel drive and it is not available. Ch uh, the Ram ProMaster is not available, although these have different upgraded wheels, I believe. And these are the winter tires that could also be affecting my, my mileage, but it's not available in four-wheel drive. Other questions? You're welcome. I, I'm glad to do this. I love doing this kind of review because it's hard to get, you know, these are not easy to find right now. So the fact that Panoramic has loaned this to me, I thought it would be important to, to show it and tell you honestly what it's like using it and then answer all of your questions. You know, honestly, but, you know, what, I, what do I think about it? And I love it. That's my bottom line. I love it. This thing is a dream. And I'm going to have to figure out how to get me one because it just, it's changed my RV experience completely. There we go. The white's nice too. Um, the ground, I don't know what the ground clearance is here. I'll have to find out from Phil. This is the 3500, yes, this is the Ram 3500, 21 foot in length, okay? Yeah, I don't quite, I don't know, you can see here. Does the post dividing the window, the A post, and the, obstruct the side mirror? Oh, you're talking about this here? Are you talking about this for the, that window? It does, I've not noticed it, no, it doesn't. Let's go in and see. It does not. And when you're seated, seated in here, as you can see, it doesn't. That's actually, I mean, a little bit. Like, this is actually my seated position. Okay. I'm looking at your questions now. This does not have a generator. Someone was asked, does this have a generator? This does not have a generator. Okay, um, 
it's just a conscious decision that they they made at at uh, Panoramic, which suits my needs fine. I don't know if it would suit your needs fine. To run your air conditioner back there, you have to be plugged into shore power on this rig. Um, if you had a generator, you could run the generator, and the generator would power the air conditioner. Or if you had a, a large enough lithi- lithium battery bank, then that could power the generator. That could power the air conditioner as well. So for this one, there's no generator. And to use the air conditioning back there, you'd need to um, plug it in. All right. Can I drop it off for you? I would love to. I wish I could take a tour of the country and then you, everyone could just come and see it after COVID's passed. Has this changed my perspective completely? Um, it's reaffirmed what I've always thought about the panoramic and the front lounge layout, which is for me, for me, it's the best layout available here in North America. It's not gonna be for everyone because there are some downsides to this layout. But for me uh, and my lifestyle, having two separate living spaces, a really nice front functional lounge and a really comfortable permanent bed in the back fits the bill nicely. My ascent I love, but I have to either keep it up in permanent lounge or transfer it into a bed. And that moving back and forth is a big drag for me. And it affects the quality of my RVing experience. Whereas here, just having the permanent bed that you can go back to after a long day of travel or someone can be back there reading or watching YouTube, someone else can be up here working. And basically the same length van as my ascent is it's it's a game changer for me it's a game changer um so yeah it's kind of reaffirmed my my perspective uh about class fees now the downside is when you have a bed like that in the back i mean you are climbing over the other person and that can be a drag right and you don't have to do that if you have a, a set of twin beds so that's something you have to think about you have to climb up in it there's a little step that you can pull out to climb up in it so these are the things you know maybe if i was a little bit older and mobility was a little bit of a challenge for me, then I uh, I might not like this layout so much. But for me, right now, my stage of life, I really like this layout. It really works for me. Um, what's the longest RV I'd feel comfortable parking in normal spots? Um, so I've owned every length of RV. I've, uh, I currently own the Ascent, which is 19 foot 6 inches. That's a short... You can get um, shorter ones. You can get the ProMaster in... 17 foot like the axions in that and i've not driven that but the 19 foot six inch is great because it fits comfortably in any parking spot and in any um parking lot then there's this size which is 21 feet so it's about 18 inches longer and you feel it you feel you feel a little bit of 18 inches the real question you need to ask yourself is has the manufacturer put that 18 inches of extra length to good use and on this panoramic they have and then, and it, this can still fit in almost any parking spot. I really haven't had any problems with it. It's just a little easier in the ascent at 19 foot, six inches. And then there's the big, like 23 foot, you know, 24 foot Mercedes Sprinter and, and also the transits. And, and I did own one of those. I had the Road Trek CS Adventurous. And one of the reasons why I got rid of it is because the, for me, the length was, it was just too long and I couldn't park it in standard parking spaces. And frankly, all that extra space, at least on the layout of the CS Adventurous, was not put to good use. So I couldn't justify it. You know, it was a lot of extra cabinet space and stuff that I didn't need. Um, So I find that this 21 foot splits the difference. I got really good cabinet space. Uh, I've got a nice size bathroom, a good size bed, a nice front lounge, but still can park it in, um, in, you know, almost any place I could park my Ascent. Let's see what other questions that are trying to bring up my there we go if there were bikes on the back would it be too long no i mean the bike rack here i think it adds an extra eight inches or something but it's up high it's not down low you just have to be aware that when you're backing up that you've got that extra eight inches back there um and then i haven't yet put bikes i'll have to try to put our bikes on the back and just see what it's like of course it's going to stick out a little bit more because the handlebars and stuff like that um but uh i'll have to try it out Someone says, um,
let's see, any other questions? What are the downsides? Um, so the, I, I'll, I mean, I've talked about just some of the downsides on the bed and climbing in and out. Um, I've talked about the gas mileage, just that's not pro master, that's not panoramic, that's just pro master. Um, so right now those are for me, the big, the big downsides for it. Um, all right. Any other questions? If not, I'm going to sign off and thank you all so much for joining me. When will I post my next video? Uh, after the holidays, probably in the new year sometime. Um, we're going to continue using this uh, as much as possible and continue. To look, at, I mean, it weathers pretty well, doesn't it? Yeah, we're going to continue using this thing and using and using it and taking advantage of the fact that this manufacturer has let us uh, long-term test this and reporting back to you. Um, there is no spare tire. This has a, uh, the kit, you know, uh, that you use to uh, patch up the tire, fill it with the thing, and then it's got a, a pump that you plug into the DC outlet to fill it up. That's pretty standard on, on new cars now. Oh, Nan's asking, how am I getting on with no sink in the bathroom? I'll give you my full thoughts on that when we review the bathroom. I'm still uncomfortable with it. I'm trying to get comfortable with it, honestly. Um, I spit in the toilet because um, I don't like spitting in the sink. June doesn't have any problems. He says he, he could care less whether there's a sink in the bathroom uh, or not. He likes the fact that there's no sink and there's more, more space, as I do. I do too, but I don't like if there's dishes in the sink and stuff like that, that we haven't gotten to, you know, and you're brushing your teeth or washing your hands, having whatever come in and they're dirty and the, the dishes, I don't know. There's just something, maybe I'm just anal about that, that I just, I don't feel good about. So I'm still trying to get comfortable with it. It doesn't bother me as much as when I first got in the RV, um, but it still bothers me. I'm just being honest with you. It still bothers me. That may change after I take my first shower in the bathroom because i may say oh my god that extra space it's so worth it you know but i haven't uh i haven't done that yet all right all right happy holidays and merry christmas to all of you you have additional questions put them in the comment section i'll be happy to answer them and i'll see you all in the new year okay love you all take care bye